So the significance of DOFA is um, first uh, the years of experience that uh, the individual needs um, for the classes of business that they are uh, providing advice on. The second is the requirement to, uh, to complete the regulatory exams. Uh, and thirdly and lastly, one of the more important ones is qualifications. Uh, the significance of this is the qualification that a representative has uh, or does not have um, on the date that they are first placed onto an FSP's register as a representative. So the rep needs to have a minimum of a matric. So that's the most important thing. An individual doesn't have a matric, they will, unfortunately they, they do not qualify. Uh, then depending on the date of first appointment, the rep needs a certain number of, um, a certain amount of qualifications. If appointed prior to, and this is where it gets a little bit technical, um, so if uh, appointed prior to 2010, uh, the rep will need a minimum of 30 credits and for the classes of products that they actually sell. Uh, and this will need to be at an NQF4 level. If appointed after 2010, the rep will need a full relevant financial services qualification at a minimum of an NQF level 4 through a recognised institution um, by FISCA, FISCA being the Financial Centre Conduct Authority. Important to note is that the rep has six years from the date of first appointment in the industry in order to get this qualification. So in other words, if I've been on a rep register and I haven't started a qualification and three years down the line nothing has happened and then Uber decides to appoint this individual and we realize that the individual needs a full uh, qualification, the individual now or the representative only has three years in order to get that full qualification. We found some really good salespeople, um, but unfortunately, they have been in the financial services industry. They do have a DOFA, and we found that that DOFA is one and a half years or two years to go. And the reality is, from our experience and having put people through these NQF4 qualifications, um, it, it does get quite onerous on the individuals. And we find so anything less than two years is really battle, a real battle to put those people through an NQF4 qualification. We actually assist them, but I mean they could get hold of Fisker themselves directly. Um, but when we um, go through the hiring process and we ask them the question, have you been on a register? Very often the rep doesn't actually know whether they've been on another institution's register or not. So there's a one page form that the um, candidate would fill in and then we send it to our compliance officer who facilitates that process with Fisker and we can actually then come back and say yes or no because of how long they've been on a register in the past. You know, if you're referring to certificates and you know, do I have the right qualifications, um, is the NQF level 4 qualification I've got, does it comply with Fisker's, um, uh, Fisker have a, it's probably a 30 page document which says these are the relevant institutions and these are the relevant qualifications that you can have in order to do very generic advice or specific advice related to certain products. Um, so you could firstly look at, at those, that list of the qualifications but then also get advice from a qualified individual such as someone who's in the compliance space um, and they would very easily be able to direct you and tell you this is what you need, this is what you have and this is what you don't have and in order to become compliant this is the amount of time that you've got in order to, to become compliant. Mm -hmm.